Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part two of this series that I'm putting together on struts, and uh, so let's get uh, let's get going. Last time we uh, introduced the struct and the abstract data type, and I showed you a quick example of creating a struct and creating your own variables using that struct and accessing members of the struct and whatnot. So in this video, I want to show you a couple more things. I will keep it short and sweet, but uh, basically what I want to show you how to do is how to initialize a structure variable, right? As it turns out, we can use initialization lists with structs. And I think the other thing that I'll show you is um, how to use basic operations, mathematical operations, arithmetic operations on members of the struct and we'll also create I think an array of structs that should be enough for one one video so let's go ahead and get started right so last time I showed you how you can create struct assign some values to the different variables and whatnot um, that's fine right if you wanted to assign values um, you know, using the dot operator as we did last time, you can do that. But um, just like you could initialize, say, int x, right, to 10. By initialize, I mean declare the variable and assign a value to it in one statement, right? Something like this, right? Int x equals 5. We can do something similar with structures, right? So let's say that I have my struct student and. <clears throat> Let's say that I want to create a variable called student. Well, I'll just initialize student, this student variable s, with an initialization list, right? And initialization list is very similar to what we use with arrays. And the rules for initialization lists are similar, right? So order matters for structure initialization lists, just like they do with um, arrays. So the first element of this initialization list, the first member of the initialization list, is going to be assigned to the first field of the structure, right? The second member to the second field, and the third member to the third field, right? So I could initialize student s like this, right? There's my first element, I guess you could say, my first member of the initialization list. So Hank's going to go into name. What about ID? Well, let's be 100. So 100 is going to be assigned to ID. And then GPA, right? 3.50 going to be assigned, uh, 3.50 going to be assigned to GPA. Okay? So there's an example of an initialization list, right? And let's create another student. Okay? And I guess I'll use Messiah again. Right? She was a friend of mine uh, when I was a student. And so, you know, what the heck. Okay, let's make her ID 200. And she was probably smarter than me, so she probably had a higher GPA, right? So, there we go. So I have two different students, uh, two different student variables based off of structs. Right? One uh, is S, that's me, and then one is T, that's her. So, now, right, if I compile and run this thing, not a problem. Okay, it's going to compile, right? No uh, compile time errors. Right? But let's let's now check, you know, no syntax errors, but let's check to see what happens if we uh, want to print out the contents of one of these things. So how about we print out um, student T's name, right? And then we are going to print out T's ID. Okay. And then we're going to print out T's GPA. Okay. Let's give that a shot and see what happens. Okay. Well, then there we can see there's the values that we initialized T with, right? Messiah 200, 3.75. Not a problem, right? So that's another option you can use to assign values to your structure variables. You can always use the dot operator, or you could use an initialization list. Okay. Now the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was um, you know, using arithmetic operators. Okay. It turns out 
you know, I, don't, I think I mentioned this last video, but maybe I did. Um, anything you can do with the variable of the type of one of the fields of a struct, uh, you can do, well, let me, let me rephrase. Anything that you can do with, say, a string, with an integer variable, with a double variable, right? You can do with a field, right? Just because it belongs to a structure doesn't mean that you can't use it in the same way, right? So for example, right, what if I wanted to add our two ID numbers together uh, for S and T, right? Well, S.ID, let me do this, right? Here's an X, okay? And we'll assign to X the ID, the sum of the IDs of, uh, of S and T. All right, so S dot ID plus S or plus T dot ID. Right? And then let's display the contents of X. So we should see what? We should see 300 at the end. Right? And that's what we see. Right? So there's one example of us doing whatever it is that we want to do, you know, with with one of these fields, not a problem, right? So we can add them together, we can multiply them, we can subtract them, you know, whatever. Anything that you can do with a regular old variable, you can do with one of these members of a struct. Okay. You know, I could also, if I wanted to, um, you know, divide them. For example, I could divide t dot gpa by. Um, what was it? S dot GPA, right? I could do that if I wanted to, right? There's nothing going to, oops, what am I doing? There's nothing going to stop me from doing something like that, right? So then I could see out, you know, if they're, you know, T dot GPA divided by S dot GPA. Okay. See? See? So anything that we can, you can normally do with a double, an int, string, whatever, um, anything you can you do with a regular old variable, you can do with um, fields, right, that belong to structs, okay? So shows you how to initialize structures, shows you how to use, or gave you a couple examples of using arithmetic operators on these fields. You know, how about uh, I'll show you one more thing here. Right, let me clear this mess out. Okay, what if I wanted to, what about passing a function? Print int, right? And I'll just do the function right here and, and forego a prototype just for brevity's sake, but right, let's say that I had this print function here that just prints whatever value I pass to it. Well, like I was saying earlier, anything you could do with a regular old variable of the corresponding data type you can do with a struct, right? So anything you can do with a double, I could do with a structs field that's a double. So I could call print um, s.id, right? So in this case, I'm passing a member of s to print, fine, right? There's no rule against that, right? So there's the id, 100, getting printed out, right? That was the 100 that was assigned to S's ID field, you know, again, not a problem. Anything you can do with a regular variable, you can do with a field, okay? So the last thing I wanted to show you was creating an array of structures, right? So let's do that, okay? So how do we do that? Structure, student, it's data type, new data type. So what? I created it, okay? An integer built-in data type. I can make an array of integers. Not a problem, we know this, right? Well, student's a new data type. Integer's a data type. So if I can make an array of integers, an array of that data type, I can make an array of students, an array of that data type. So how do I do that? Right? Do it just like something like this. So let us have an array of students, I'll call S, and I'll explicitly size it. We got two members, okay? So that creates two elements, right, that are of type student, right? So now I can 
use each element as if it were its own separate variable, just like you could with integers or doubles or strings or whatever, right? So let me assign some values, right? I'm going to assign um, values to my first element in the student array. How do I do that? Well, how would you ac access any other element in an array? By subscript, right? So S of zero, first element of student, right? Now I'm going to use the dot operator to access that first element's members, right? So name. Right. S of zero dot ID one hundred S of zero dot GPA three point six zero. I got smarter. Right. How about the second element? S of one name Messiah. Right. S of one ID two hundred. And S of 1, GPA, 3.75. She's still smarter than I am, what can I say, right? So all I'm doing now is combining dot operator, right, with a subscript to identify which field for which student I want to set a value for, right? And so this allows me to do something, some cool stuff like this, right? I can combine the benefits of arrays with the benefits of structures, right? Another thing here to notice is that, you know, check this out. I've got three different data types inside this structure, right? Well, now each element of this array has got essentially three different data types. So it's as if I'm combining multiple data types into the same array, right? Kind of cool. All right, so anyway, let us use a for loop to iterate over the array and print out the contents of the array, okay? So how about we try to use um, the new range-based loop from C++11, why not, right? So what this is saying is we're gonna iterate over every element of the S array, the student S array, right? And what happens is, is that S is the array, right? And I is gonna be the name of the variable, and it's a reference variable. Um, that's going to refer to each element, right? So within the body of this for loop, you'll see here, it's really easy. In the body of this for loop, um, for every element, I basically becomes like a reference to each element of the array. So I'll use the I in here, okay? By having the ampersand here, it's passed by reference, just like passed by reference with a function. I'm not copying each element of S to I. I'm directly referring to each element of S. More efficient. Okay, so anyway, let's see how I dot name. Let's see how I dot ID. And then let's see how I dot GPA. So uh, let's give that a shot. Let's see what happens. Right. Should see Hank and then um, sign up. Okay. I'll run that, and there we go, right? So there's the contents, those first three lines there. For, there's the contents of the zeroth element of the array, right? The first element. And then uh, the second set of lines, the second three lines beside 203.75, it's contents of that second element of the array, okay? Well, I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, in conclusion, we talked about uh, initialization lists for structures. We went over a couple examples of using arithmetic operators on structure fields. And then I showed you uh, how to create arrays of students. Okay. So thanks for watching. Next time, We'll take a look at functions and initialization lists for structures or for arrays of structures. All right? So, really appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, please consider leaving a like. And if you have any questions, you're my, if you're a student of mine, what have you, oh, as always, feel free to stop by my office hours or shoot me an email. Okay? All right, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.